Listen, O Thomas, to the events that will unfold in the last days. For there will be famine, warfare, and earthquakes in various places. And now that I have your attention, welcome to my channel. I am Joshua T. Whaley, author of Lost Cannibal Manifesto, amongst other titles. I would like to thank all my new subscribers for showing me love. And if this is your first time finding me, first I'm a little in shock as a lot of my videos are shadow banned by the algorithm. You need to look no further than Wednesday's video titled The Origins of Yahweh, which had less than a fifth of the impressions that my normal videos get. But that's neither here nor there. If you're interested in listening to an author and translator read his own writing instead of an AI voice reading someone else's words, then you've come to the right place. With that said, let's go ahead and begin today's text, which is apocryphal. Written sometime between the 2nd and 4th century CE by an unknown author, the Apocalypse of Thomas claims to be a letter written by Yeshua bar Yosef. Some know him by his stage name, Jesus Christ, to the Apostle Thomas, revealing the end times. Little was actually known about this work before the early 1900s, as the only written record was found in the Galatian decree of the 14th century by Pope Galatian I, who condemned the text as apocryphal and banned followers from reading it. However, since 1908, multiple manuscripts have been found, allowing scholars to piece the story back together. What they discovered is that the story was popular and well known by those who lived in regions of northern Europe around the 9th and 10th century, leading to some Western Christian churches of that area to canonize the story. It was also believed to be popular in the time of Shakespeare and inspired his 15 signs before doomsday. But for some reason, the story was then lost to the sands of time. Side note, the first part of our story comes from the 1907 publication by F. Wilhelm in Munich. With that, I used the M. R. James translation from 1924 for my translation and interpretation. Okay, let's start. Here begins the letter of the Lord addressed to Thomas. Listen, Thomas, to the events that will unfold in the last days. There will be famine warfare, and earthquakes in various locations. There will be snow and ice, as well as severe droughts that will occur. There will be much discord among nations, along with blasphemy, wickedness, jealousy, corruption, laziness, arrogance, and excess, so that everyone will speak what pleases them. My priests will lack harmony among themselves, and will offer sacrifices to me with deceitful hearts. Consequently, I will turn away from them. Then the priests will see the people leaving the house of the Lord and turning to worldly matters, setting up and violating boundaries in the house of God. They will reclaim many things for themselves. Places that had been lost will again be subject to Caesar as they once were. Taxes will be paid to the cities, including gold and silver, and the leading figures of the cities will face condemnation. The people's wealth will be taken to the king's treasury, billing it. There will be great turmoil among the people, leading to death. The house of the Lord will be empty, and their altars will be detested, so that spiders will spin their webs within. The holy places will be defiled, the priests will be tainted, suffering will rise, virtue will be vanquished, joy will vanish, and happiness will depart. In these times, evil will flourish, and there will be favoritism towards the wicked. Hymns will stop resounding in the house of the Lord. There will be absence. Their greed will overflow among the priests. A righteous person will not be found. In a sudden turn of events, a king who cherishes the law will emerge in the last days, but his reign will be short-lived. However, he will leave behind two sons. The first will be named Arcadius, and the second will be named Honorius, but the first will die prior to the second. Side note, Arcadius was a real Roman emperor who was the eldest son of Emperor Theodosius I. 
and Arcadius passed away in 408 CE. His younger brother, Emperor Honorius, died in 423 CE. The question is, was this possibly added in the 4th century, or was this part of the prophecy fulfilled? Following this, two rulers will rise up to burden the nations, resulting in severe famines in the eastern region, leading nations to conflict and being displaced from their own territories. Another king will then come forth. He is cunning and orders a golden statue of Caesar to be created and worshipped within the house of God, which will cause many to face martyrdom. Subsequently, faith will be restored among the Lord's servants. Holiness will increase, yet distress will also heighten. The mountains will be comforted and will emit a sweet fire from their peaks, allowing for the completion of the saints' number. After a brief period, a king will emerge from the east, one who cherishes the law, and he will ensure that all good things and essentials flourish in the Lord's house. He will show kindness to widows and the needy, and decree a royal gift be given to the priests. During his reign, there will be an abundance of necessities. Then, another king will come forth from the southern region and will rule for a short time. Under his reign, the treasury will dwindle due to the payments made to the Roman soldiers. He will then compel the resources of the elderly be collected and given to him for distribution. Following this, there will be an abundance of grain, wine, and oil, but a significant rise in prices such that gold and silver will be exchanged for grain, leading to severe scarcity. During that time, the seas will surge immensely, preventing any communication among the people. Earthly rulers, princes, and military leaders will find themselves in disarray, and no one will be able to speak openly. Gray hairs will appear on youths, and the young will not yield to the old. Following that, another king will emerge, who is a cunning individual. He will only reign briefly, though. But during his time, numerous calamities will occur, including the death of the population from the east to Babylon. Afterwards, death, famine, and violence will prevail in the land of Canaan up to Rome. Then, all water sources and wells will overflow and turn into blood and dust. The heavens will be shaken, the stars will fall to the earth, the sun will be split like the moon, and the moon will will lose its light. In these times, great signs and wonders will appear as the Antichrist approaches. These are the omens for the living of the earth. At the time, the anguish of severe labor pains will come upon them. Woe to those who build, for they will not occupy their structures. Woe to those who break ground, for their efforts will be in vain. Woe! to those who marry, for they will bring forth children amidst famine and need. Woe to those who combine house with house, or field with field, for everything will be consumed by fire. Woe to those who neglect to look after themselves while there is still time, for they will face eternal condemnation later. Woe to those who turn away from the needy when they seek help, for I am the high and powerful, I am the Father of all. These are the seven indicators of the end of the world. There will be famine and severe plagues across the globe, along with great distress. Then all people will be taken captive in various nations and will perish by the sword. On the first day of judgment, a great wonder will occur, marking the beginning. At the third hour, a powerful voice will resonate from the heavens, followed by a great cloud of blood descending from the north, accompanied by a loud thunder and significant lightning resulting excuse me, in a rain of blood over the entire earth. These are the signs for the first day. On the second day, there will be a mighty voice heard in the heavens, and the earth will be shaken from its position. The gates of heaven 
will open in the eastern sky, releasing tremendous power, which will cover all of the heavens until evening, and trembling will grip the world. These are the signs for the second day. On the third day, at approximately the second hour, a voice will echo in heaven, and the depths of the earth will respond from all corners of the world. The first heaven will roll up like a scroll and will quickly disappear. Due to the smoke and foul smell of the brimstone from the abyss, the days will be darkened until the tenth hour. Then all the people will say, I believe the end is approaching, and we are all doomed. These are the signs for the third day. On the fourth day, at the first hour, the eastern earth will speak and the abyss will roar. The entire planet will tremble from the force of an earthquake. On that day, all the idols of the pagans will collapse and all the structures of the earth will fall. These are the signs of the fourth day. On the fifth day, at the sixth hour, there will be a sudden and mighty thunder in the heavens. The source of light, along with the sun's wheel, will be taken away, casting a deep darkness over the world until evening. The stars will cease to fulfill their purpose. On that day, all nations will grow to loathe the world and disdain the life it offers. These are the signs marking the fifth day. And on the sixth day, there will be signs in the heavens, and at the fourth hour, the sky shall be split from east to west. The angels of heaven will gaze down upon the earth as the heavens are open, and all the people will behold the angelic hosts appearing above earth. Then all individuals will flee. Side note. Here, the Wilhelm text abruptly ends. So now, let's compare and contrast the seven days as it is covered in what is known as the Vienna Fragment, circa the 11th century, which mainly focuses on the seven days. Luckily, this version also has a conclusion to the story. After you hear both versions of the seven days, tell me in the comments which one you like better. Did you like that plug for a comment? Listen to me, O Thomas, for I am the Son of God, the Father, and the origin of all spirits. Pay attention to the signs that will occur at the conclusion of this world before my chosen ones leave it. I will reveal openly to humanity what is to come. However, the angels themselves do not know when these events will happen, as it is currently concealed. There will be conflicts among kings throughout the earth. There will be widespread famines, severe plagues, and various hardships. The people will be captured by all nations and will perish by the sword. Additionally, there shall be significant turmoil in the world. After this, as the end approaches, there will be noteworthy signs in the heavens for seven days, and the celestial powers will be shaken. On the first day, a significant event will commence. At the third hour of the day, a thunderous voice will echo in the heavens, and a bloody cloud will rise from the north, accompanied by fierce thunder and powerful lightning. This will cast a shadow over all of heaven, and there will be rainfall and blood upon the earth. These are the signs of the first day. On the second day, a loud voice will be heard in the heavens. The earth will shift from its place, and the gates of heaven will open to the east, causing smoke from a large fire to burst forth and fill the skies until evening. On this day, there will be great fear and terror among the people. These are the signs for the second day. On the third day, around the third hour, a loud voice will be heard in heaven, and the depths of the earth will tremble from all corners of the world. The heights of the sky will be open, and the air will be filled with columns of smoke. A foul smell of brimstone will linger until the tenth hour, causing people to say, We believe the time is near for our demise. These are the signs for the third day. On the fourth day, at the first hour, the abyss from the east will rise and make a loud noise. The earth will then shake violently due to a tremendous earthquake. On that day, the adornments of the idolaters will collapse and all structures will fall before the strength of the quake. These are the signs for the fourth day. On the fifth day, at the sixth hour, a great thunder will suddenly occur in heaven and the powers 
of light and the sun's wheel will be taken away, resulting in darkness covering the world until evening. The air will be sorrowful without the sun or moon, and the stars will stop shining. On that day, all nations will look as if they are gazing into a mirror and will scorn the pleasures of this world. These are the signs of the fifth day. On the sixth day, at the fourth hour, a loud voice will be heard in heaven, and the sky will split from east to west. The angels in heaven will peer down at the earth through the opening above, and all those on earth will see the hosts of angels looking down. Then everyone will run to the mountains to hide from the presence of the righteous angels, saying, We, we wish the earth would open and swallow us. Such events will occur as they have never happened since the creation of the world. Then they will see me descending from above the light of my Father, accompanied by the mighty glory of the holy angels. Upon my arrival, the barrier of fire surrounding paradise will be removed because paradise is encircled by flames. This will be the eternal fire that will consume the earth and all its elements. Then the spirits and souls of all humanity will emerge from paradise and cover the earth. Each will return to their own body where it lies proclaiming, here rests my body. When the powerful voice of these spirits is heard, a mighty earthquake will shake the entire world, causing mountains to split from above and rocks to break apart from below. Then each spirit will return to its own vessel, and the bodies of the saints who have passed away will rise. Their bodies will be transformed to reflect the image, likeness, and honor of the holy angels, embodying the power of the image of my holy Father. They will be adorned with the garments of eternal life drawn from the cloud of light that has never before been seen in this world, for the cloud descends from the highest heaven by the authority of my Father. And the cloud will envelop all the spirits that have placed their faith in me with its radiant beauty. Then they will be dressed and carried by the hands of the holy angels, just as I previously mentioned. They will also be lifted into the sky on a cloud of light and will joyfully accompany me to heaven where they will dwell in the light and honor of my Father. There will be immense joy for those with my Father and in the presence of the holy angels. These significant the signs of the sixth day. On the seventh day at the eighth hour, there will be voices resonating from the four corners of heaven. The air will tremble and be filled with holy angels who will emerge and battle throughout the day. On that day, the holy angels will seek out my chosen ones from the impending destruction of the world, and all will witness that the time of their downfall is approaching. These indications, the signs of the seventh day. Once the seven days have passed, on the eighth day, at the sixth hour, a gentle and sweet voice will be heard in the heavens from the east. Then the angels who hold authority over the holy angels will be revealed, and all the angels will emerge with him, riding on the chariots of my holy father's clouds, rejoicing and moving swiftly through the air beneath the heavens to rescue the elect who have placed their faith in me. They will celebrate the arrival of the world's destruction. This concludes the words of the Savior to Thomas regarding the end of this world. So let's unpack this. Wow. If you put into context the society we live in today, does it not mirror the first part of this and Wilhelm's work? Then if you think about it and you look at the sixth day and the Vienna fragment, that almost sounds like what some Christians believe to be the rapture. But I'm going to leave a lot of this interpretation up to you. And now I'll do my normal housekeeping for the end of the video. If you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe. 
leave a comment. It really helps me grow in the algorithm. If you really want to help support me, those are the books I've written, novels, anthologies, silly history on werewolves. I am working on a new book that will be an epic telling of the world from the Big Bang all the way to the end. I've titled it Forbidden Genesis, The Untold Story of Man. Anyway, I'll talk to you again soon. I love you all. Bye.